my name is Olivia Lanes. I am the North American Lead for Kiskit Education and Community here at IBM Quantum. And today I'm going to be doing a book review of my favorite books in quantum computing and quantum mechanics for students of all different backgrounds. I'm going to be telling you why I think these books are the most helpful books or they have been for me throughout my journey in quantum computing. So the first book I want to recommend is The Introduction to Classical and Quantum Computing by Thomas Wong, who is a fabulous author and a fabulous person. So this book, I think, starts out probably at one of the more introductory levels. It has a really good preface to get you started on sort of what prerequisites you might need for the book, which are minimal. And then it starts talking about what classical computing is. I think I really love this book because one of the things that I always complain about and that I've spoken to Tom about before actually is how when people talk about what quantum computing is, they always say, okay, well, you know how classical computing works. And they just assume that whoever they're talking to is intimately familiar with how classical computers process information. But I'm sure that's not really the case, and it wasn't necessarily the case for me either when I went to graduate school and I started my PhD in quantum computing. I didn't actually really know how bits worked or how cl even classical computers worked on a fundamental level. So he doesn't assume that knowledge. He starts talking about what classical computing is, how bits actually are used to encode different types of information, and then how classical gates are different and similar to quantum gates. So that's why I really love this textbook. It has a completely different introduction than most quantum computing books. And before he gets into you know, some of the harder stuff, he starts out at a place where he knows that all of his readers will be able to catch up. It also has some really good problems throughout. Um, none of them are, are too, too difficult. So I think a, a freshman even can pick up this book and have a really good educational experience. All right, book number two, um, Quantum Mechanics by David Griffiths. Uh, nothing too shocking here. This is sort of the introductory textbook that basically everybody uses when they first start learning about quantum mechanics. Um, it's a classic for a reason. It's a great textbook. Is it flawed? Yes. Is it still like the gold standard for undergrad quantum computing textbooks? Yes. So. I love it because it has an interlude in the middle about what Dirac notation is and how to get started on the mathematical formalism, but it doesn't start there. It starts talking about the wave function, what the wave function is and how do we interpret it? And what does that mean when we start talking about probability and statistical interpretations? And I think this is really, of course, the fundamental problem with quantum mechanics when we're trying to make the leap from people's understanding from classical to quantum is that maybe people aren't as familiar with the statistical nature of reality. And so when we dive into that without explaining it, it can get a little wonky. All right, so David Griffiths, excellent textbook. Um, mine's a little beaten up. You can see I've written some notes throughout it, but it is well loved. Um, you're, you're not a physics person if you don't own a copy of this book. Uh, third, Quantum Computer Science by Merman. This is a little bit of a different book than the ones that I have mentioned so far. This is sort of quantum computing from a computer scientist's point of view. Whether these were more physics, I think at least David Griffiths is definitely a physics textbook. And this one, like I said, is more computer science. So these, this textbook is not going to teach you about Shor's algorithm. It's not going to teach you about Grover's algorithm or what those are or how those work. But this one is. These are really more of how to get started with the mathematical formalism. This is how do I understand what quantum computing is doing and why is it important and what is a quantum computer. Um, he spells qubits wrong, but we can forgive him for that. He wrote a really, really great textbook. I use this a lot when I'm trying to understand different elements of Qiskit and different modules in Qiskit. And so I think that this is a really great textbook for people who are coming at it from a developer point of view. All right, uh, next book is Quantum Computing Since Democritus by Scott Aronson. Scott Aronson is really sort of a guru in our field of computer science and quantum computing. Um, he is a professor at Texas at Austin, and he's really just uh, such a fun and interesting guy to talk to. I've had the pleasure of meeting him on a few occasions. This is not really 
a textbook that you would maybe have as a textbook for a class necessarily. It's sort of broad and very wide ranging. And in fact, there's a really great quote in the preface here that says, um, you know, if you're the type of reader that only likes to digest popular science once all of the science has been washed away, uh, skip this book. This is not for the faint of heart necessarily. This talks about, you know, some elements that are in popular science. It talks about why quantum computing can be so powerful. It talks about, you know, just P equal NP and why do we care? But it has some, you know, more difficult elements as well that you really have to, you know, spend some time with and really just sort of mull and stew in the implications of it in order to get the benefit of it. He has some great problems throughout, or he has what he says, problems for the non-lazy reader. Um, you should do them. They're really helpful. And yeah, this is, this is a classic. This is a great textbook. I've had this um, for many years, ever since I started in the field. Next is not exactly a textbook. It sort of is, but it could be. It is circuit QED, superconducting qubits, coupled to microwave photons. These are, uh, or they were originally lecture notes that Stephen Gervin compiled from his lectures uh, at Yale. And this is just masterful lecture notes. I mean, it's been edited, it's been formatted in a way that, you know, it should have a cover, it doesn't. I had to, you know, illegally print it off the internet, but I printed the entire thing and I have kept it uh, with all of my other textbooks on my shelves for many years. Um, circuit QED is basically the mathematical formalism and the physics that is behind how we actually interact with what we call transmon qubits, which are the qubits that IBM builds all of its quantum processors off of. And the physics behind it and the concept of the Josephson junction are all laid out in this textbook. Again, this is, this is a physics-y textbook. So this is not going to talk to you about Shor's algorithm and other quantum computing algorithms and applications. This is gonna talk about, you know, how do I take a qubit and couple it to a resonator and how do I communicate with that resonator? It's very fundamental. Good for experimentalists like me. Um, but I never like to scare people away from understanding the experimental elements. I think it is if not important, at least very interesting to understand quantum processors from the ground up like this. So, um, excellent read. It's it's a little it's a little hefty. There's a lot of math in it, um, but if you can make it through this, uh, you're really going to understand some physics. And last but not least, we have the Bible of quantum computing. This is Nielsen and Schwong, lovingly referred to as Mike and Ike. This is the bread and butter of our field. Um, this is a classic for a reason. This is like the 10th anniversary edition. This is the book that I used as a textbook in graduate school for the only quantum computing course I ever took. Um, it starts at, you know, a pretty non-technical place. Um, it starts with, you know, some very basic gates, and then it talks a little bit about, um, you know, some of the math and like some of the decomposition that you'll need to know to understand later chapters in the book. But it really ramps up pretty quickly. Uh, it's not an easy textbook. Um, there are problems throughout. Again, it starts off in, you know, a pretty good place. This is definitely appropriate for a graduate level reader. Um, might be a little bit too, too advanced for an undergrad, but if you are um, determined, you can make it through. The problems get pretty hard and pretty complicated towards the end, but yeah, if you're gonna go into quantum computing, uh, you're gonna have to read this book, so you might as well just buckle down and, and get started. All right, and there you have it. Uh, these are my picks for the best quantum computing textbooks. Um, if I forgot any, I probably did. I haven't read every single quantum computing textbook in existence. It seems like there's a new one every other week now, but these are classics. These are excellent. Um, if you're stocking up on your library, if you're trying to figure out where to start, start here. One more bonus book, The Quantum Spy by David Ignatius. This is a work of fiction. 
sort of. Um, it's a thriller about <laughs> quantum computing. I read it last year. It's actually a pretty good book. Uh, and if you pay attention, there are some fictional characters that are based, at least loosely, off of real players in the field. So if you're interested in that, um, this is a fun read. You're not gonna learn too much about quantum computing by reading it. However, nothing in the book uh, is, you know, totally crazy and out there. It's mostly based on scientific merit. What I would read on a desert island if I had to learn quantum computing. <laughs>